Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and there was a shakeup in the governor's race this week as State Senator Annette Tadeo abandoned her campaign to be the Democrat who would face Ron DeSantis in November. Instead, she told me she is running for the congressional seat now held by Republican Maria Elvira Salazar. Now, in a few minutes, we will talk to Nikki Freed, one of the two remaining Democrats in the race for governor. We'll ask her how that campaign changes now that it is just her and Charlie Crist. But first, we speak to Tadeo. Her shift to the congressional race was not unexpected. She was a distant third in the polls in the governor's race. She had little money, and the congressional seat lines up with a part of the county she already represents in the state senate. So I started by asking her what finally made her decide to switch races. Absolutely, and I will tell you, I, I had a decision to make. I could stay in a bruising primary or I could uh, fight in this congressional. And I'll tell you, uh, after you uh, put out that there's there was this possibility, I will tell you it, it, it was very humbling, first of all, with pride, with honesty. That's what we're lacking in our community and in our country. Now that you're leaving the race, are you planning on endorsing either Nikki Freed or Charlie Crist? They, most folks would expect you to endorse Charlie Crist. Is that going to happen? Frankly, I haven't even had an opportunity to think about that. As of right now, we are concentrating on making sure uh, that we launch this campaign for Congress and that we give it all we have and that we ensure that we get the seat back and that Miami has a representative of the people and that truly fights for the issues that matter to Miamians. The perception is, is that Governor Ron DeSantis is not beatable. That, that, that now that, you know, with you out of the race and it's either going to be Charlie Chris or Nikki Freed, do you honestly believe that either Charlie Chris or Nikki Freed can beat Ron DeSantis in the fall? Look, I still believe uh, that I would have been the strongest candidate against Ron DeSantis. And the reality is that we as Democrats uh, have a huge problem in Miami-Dade and a deficit of voters, as, as well as the fact that you can win statewide without improving those numbers. Uh, Biden did uh, 25 points less than Hillary, 15 points less than Gillum. And unless we fix that problem, it is definitely a concern. But again, I am very, very adamant about the fact that we need true leaders and that we need to have those voices at the table and fighting for the issues that matter to people in our community. And I'm not gonna stand on the sidelines at this moment uh, and not go fight for our kids' futures uh, to be able to have all the freedoms that so many of us hold so dear. You didn't actually answer my question. Do you believe that Nikki Fried and, or Charlie Chris can beat Ron DeSantis in the fall? I always knew that this was a difficult race. And I do believe that uh, anything in politics as always can happen. But again, uh, unless Miami-Dade is improved and we improve those numbers uh, with Hispanic voters, it is going to be very difficult. All right, let's turn to the congressional race. Let's talk about, um, obviously you have a primary there as well. Uh, Ken Russell, the Miami City Commissioner, uh, has been running in that seat. He had formerly run for the Senate, left the Senate race to run against Salazar. Let's start with that. Why do you believe you're a better fit for the Democratic nomination than Ken Russell? Look, uh, this, this moment in time in this race is so much bigger than Ken Russell or myself. It, this is about Miamians. And frankly, this seat has been a seat that has been uh, represented by people that regardless of party have always really looked out for Miamians and been a pivotal voice in the country representing Miami and the diversity that we have. And I really believe that we can win this seat back, but we got to have the best candidate in order for us to win it. And I, I know that I am that candidate. I know that I represent much of the community. And, and frankly, I believe that the moment requires us 
uh, to fight for the seat back and to have a representative that's going to be honest and truly represent everyone, not just those that vote for us. Well, let's talk about uh, the woman you hope to challenge in November, Maria Vera Salazar. What is it about her record that, that you think needs to be challenged? What, what has she done in Congress over the past two years that, that you think is out of step with the district? Well, frankly, again, we're uh, on the shoulders of, of giants, uh, whether it was Dante Fassell or Eliana ross Lettinen or um, our own Donna Shalala. This seat has always been represented, regardless of party, uh, by someone that would, would bring everyone together, would really look out to represent the community, to work across the aisle to get things done. And what we've had, frankly, is a demagogue, a liar, and an embarrassment, and someone that has not even voted in the best interest of our community, whether it is to lower gas, uh, the cost of gas, or to put more baby formulas on shelves, or actually to protect us from domestic terrorism. And I could go on and on. We well, need to- wait, wait, wait. I want you to be specific, because if you're gonna make the allegation that she's a demagogue and a liar, please be specific. What do you, what do you believe she has lied about? Because that's a serious charge to say that someone is a liar. Well, look, uh, there are so many instances and we will have a long campaign where we will bring out all of the issues, but I know I can go toe to toe. But more importantly, Jim, this is again, this is about the future of our kids and making sure we have a representative that's actually going to be up front uh, with uh, the voters, that's going to uh, try to bring us together instead of divide us and separate us and vote in the best interest of our community, not uh, votes that are so partisan and so extreme that you're not really looking out for the best interests of Miamians. You know, this, uh, this is a rough year to be a Democrat running uh, for a congressional seat, let alone statewide, but for a congressional seat. Everyone anticipates that there is going to be a red wave that will move across the country, that Democrats will lose power in the House, uh, could also lose control of the Senate. Uh, what makes you think that, that this is a seat that can go from being a red seat to a blue seat in a year in which there are going to be a lot of Democrats across the country wiped out of office. Indeed, this seat uh, and this race will not be easy. And I am uh, obviously attracted to tough races. But look, I currently represent a seat that voted for Trump by six points and very popular in my district. And that is because, again, I truly represent all of my community, whether they voted for me or not, and try to be that voice and that fighter for them. And that's not what we have right now. So I think if anyone can go against whatever wave or whatever movement there is, nobody expected me to win in a special election. After all, uh, Democrats were notorious for not winning special elections where we were trying to flip a seat from red to blue. It was the first time in Florida history and we did it. And I know we can do it again. We can flip the seat and actually have a representative that's going to represent all of Miamians, no matter which party they represent and bring us together.